Amen. If you have your Bibles, open the book of 1 John, chapter number 5. 1 John, chapter number 5. just so happens that sometimes as you study for sermons, get them together, the Lord, the Lord ties some things together, and you see His hand. This morning, I preached out of 1 Corinthians, chapter 15, and uh, preached on victory. Tonight, out of 1 John, we're back on victory. That's where we're at. It's where the Lord wants us to be, in victory. Look in your Bibles, if you would, the book of 1 John, chapter number 5, verse number 4. For whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world. And this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our, help me, even our, help me again, faith. What is the victory? Our faith. Faith brings victory. Let's say it again. Faith brings victory. Victory. What kind of victory? Victory over pain. Victory over hopelessness. Victory over lack of purpose. Victory over guilt. Victory over shame. Victory over hurt. Victory over bitterness. Victory comes from faith. Young people just got back from camp. Shortened camp. Three days of camp. I couldn't be there the whole time. That hurt my heart. But uh, don't worry. I'll be back. I'm like that fungus that never quite goes away. You can get a lot of medicine for it, but it's still there every time you look. And I love camp, and I love what God does at camp. I do. I love the services, and I wish I could bottle it all up and bring it back here, or bottle you up there and take you up there and just let you sit like a fly on the wall or just a person inside there. You teenagers know, right? Those services are like, you come there with an expectation to see God work, an expectation to see of the victory that God can bring. Folks made decisions. Church folk, friend, you've made decisions in life. If you've trusted Christ, it's a decision. And that decision should be in victory. Tonight I don't look at what victory, according to this passage, looks like in faith. Our faith is the diving board to the blessings of life. I was 11 or 12 years old, we were at a pool and a diving board there. I'd never learned to dive before. So I decided to teach myself how to dive. I don't know why that's funny. Can anyone teach yourself? Can everyone teach yourself how to dive? Just so you know, I can now dive off a diving board. Thank you. Then in that process, I did not know how to dive, and so of course, as you you jump with with, with correct form, all right, then you kind of turn and 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 supposedly go hand, and then followed by head, and then feet. You know that if you don't completely rotate off a diving board, you do what they call as a belly flop. Not nearly as effective as a dive. Not nearly as comfortable as a dive. The water on a correct dive just kind of just like flows right around you. With a deli- belly flop, it kind of smacks all around you. Or if you do a nice dive and correct form, you end in the water like, wow, that felt nice. A belly flop, you think, wow, that hurt. That hurt. I don't want to do that again. Our faith is a diving board with blessings of life. But doesn't it seem like sometimes with our faith, when we jump off the diving board, we smack the water of life? And we belly flop it? We see someone else like, wow, that was a nicely executed dive in life. Boy, they handled that situation really well. They conquered that addiction very well. They handled that hurt pretty well. They dove pretty well. And here I am just flopping all over the water, top of the water, and it hurts every time I land. You ever feel that way, Christian? This verse tells me that whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world, and this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. I don't read of a belly flop in that verse. I read of a perfectly executed dive into victory. Lord, help us as we look at this passage, this verse, Lord. Help us to live a life in faith and in victory, Lord. Lord, help us for those ways and and, and in those areas that we've not been walking in faith and have no victory. Lord, you've solved the greatest problem mankind has, and that's sin. Lord, you've saved us to a life of victory. Lord, help me as I speak now to have those words that would be clear and the truth would be evident. Lord, your spirit work now in your Jesus' name I ask. Amen. See, a faith-filled outlook is a victorious outlook. I'm going to talk about three areas briefly tonight. and the, The first area is this. If you're defeated, you're not walking by faith. If you're discouraged, you're not trusting by faith. And if you're distracted, you're not living by faith. You see, when there's victory, there's encouragement or no discouragement. I've met a lot of Christians, not as many as some of you and more than others, 
it seems like sometimes it is hard to find an encouraging Christian. You see, when you're in victory, there's no place for discouragement. When you walk in victory, this changes your outlook. This changes your day. This alters your social media posts. They're now one of victory. This changes your thought process. Now it's, wow, look what God has done. Man, isn't God good? This changes your critical spirit. Too many Christians walk by realism, but not by faith. I'm just a realist. No, you're discouraged. I'm just a realist. No, you're just not walking by faith. You say, Pastor Howell, you're making this up. This is not in the Bible. Oh, but it is, my friend. It is. John chapter 16, verse 33. The words of our Lord Jesus Christ, where he says these things, I have spoken unto you that in me ye might have peace. And in peace in the world ye shall have tribulation, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. That same word, overcome. He says, be of good cheer or don't be discouraged. What do you think be of good cheer means? I went to Bible colleges. I had the ancient language study. But even without that, you can figure it out. My daughter, who's seven, can figure out what it means to be of good cheer. It's not that difficult now, is it? If we're riding in the car and I see a pouty lip in the backseat and I said, Danielle, be of good cheer. Have a cheerful expression. Oh, Daddy, what does that mean? Oh, can you please explain that? Uh, Danielle, it appears you still have a pouty lip. No, Daddy, I'm cheerful on the inside. <laughs> we can figure that out. But somewhere in between, a, between, between the time of 7 and 77, they say, well, that's not really what it means. I don't have to have good cheer, but I have a lot of faith in God. No, Jesus says, if you, if you trust me, Trust me that I've overcome the world, and when I've overcome the world, you understand that you're going to have a good outlook. That's walking in victory. Young person, when you walk in victory, you're going to have a positive attitude. That's what he says. And I'll say it this way, church friend and teenager, if you don't, you're not walking by faith. If you don't have a positive, cheerful attitude based on faith in Jesus Christ, you're not walking by faith. You're walking in yourself. Too many Christians walk by realism, not by faith. Well, I've just walked this path before. No, you haven't. No, you haven't. I know of no one who can future walk. Save Jesus. Save Jesus. He's already in your tomorrow. And he says, don't worry about it. I've got it. That's a life of victory. Well, Pastor, that's, that's nice for the young people at camp. That's so sweet for those teenagers. They ought to be cheerful and trust in God. And we as adults ought to lead the way. They ought to be able to see our walk with God, our faith, be of good cheer. I love that song, I'm so happy, and here's the reason why. Help me if you know it. Jesus took my burdens all the way. Once my heart was heavy with the load of sin, Jesus, right? He took my load of sin. I'm so happy. If you're saved and you know it, say, Amen. Amen. How about this? Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forever. He must increase, but I must decrease. Be steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. He knows the way that I take. The steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. A life of faith is a life of victory. You see, faith changes everything. My faith is not just for church. It's not just for my devotions. It's for my everyday living. And your faith ought to be the exact same way. Faith that shows up in an encouraging spirit. Why? Because Jesus has already won. But pastor, it's hard. Yeah. Jesus said, well, offenses will come. But he said, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. And I love that song. I've read the back of the book, and we win. I'm not one of those people who skips to the end. All right, I don't skip in books. I don't skip in movies. I watch to see what happens. Sometimes I'm disappointed. But I've never been disappointed in this book right here. 
And no matter what happens here, Jesus says, I've got it for you. There is victory. I'm on the winning side. Song in my heart, a smile on my face, a love in my heart, and blessings on my mind. That's a faith-filled, victorious life. So tomorrow morning, when you get up and you're tired, walk in faith. That's a victory-filled life. When you're driving home tonight and your car blows a tire, walk in faith. Be of good cheer. I've overcome the world. When you get home and your home is hot because your air conditioner's dead, be of good cheer. I've overcome the world. When you burn up your lawnmower, be of good cheer. I've overcome the world. When things don't turn out like you want to, overcome. Why? Because Jesus has already overcome. That's a life of victory. What I'm trying to say is I'm tired of sour puss, victory-filled Christians. I'm tired of it. But that's because Jesus is tired of it. That's never how he taught us to live, to look, to think, or to act. He said, be of good cheer. Faith changes everything. You see, there's an encouragement. There's also an exhortation. Faith not only changes everything, faith brings freedom. Jesus is the all-time champion. Maybe you've played this game, paper, rock, or scissors, right? Paper, rock, or scissors. You ever played that game before? Sometimes if you play that game, paper, rock, or scissors, it's best three out of five. Until you've lost three, then you make it five out of seven. Then nine out of twelve. Then fifteen out of twenty-two. Or uh, thirty out of uh, out of fifty. Or seventy out of a hundred. Or two hundred out of three hundred. Some people are used to losing, right? Oh, that's how they walk in their Christian life. And there's an encouragement here, but there's also an exhortation here. Because Jesus won, and there's victory, we can win. These young people at camp made some serious commitments. Some of you made commitments with family and the way you'd act. Some in the way you operate inside a church service. And some in your fear versus your faith. Right? Those are serious commitments. And you know what God says? God says, you don't ever have to go back on that commitment. Christian friend or here adult here tonight, you've made some commitments in your life. Some of your dads have committed to be a godly father in the home. You don't have to go back on that commitment in your life. You can walk in victory. There's an exhortation to walk in victory. You made some commitments in your life perhaps to, to see victory in an area of addiction or a habit. God says you can walk in victory. There's an exhortation. Or can we say it this way? You don't have to live like a loser. You don't have to live like a loser. In our house, we have a lot of competitions. I'll say it this way, life's a competition. Anyone who says otherwise is used to losing. I don't know how your house is, but sometimes it's like we get out and whoever gets home first. In fact, today my wife drove separately this morning and, and me and the boys got home first. We gloated in our victory. It wasn't a race, but it was a race. Our, our car got home first. That's how the how I operate sometimes. Right? I don't, maybe, maybe we're the only family that way, but everything is now, uh-oh, who's going to brush your teeth? Who's the first one back down from brushing their teeth? You know, who's doing this? Oh, who's... And it's just, as a Christian, we can live in victory. Victory from depression. Victory from hurts. You don't have to live like a loser. Because Jesus says that we're not losers, but we're winners. Not because I'm good, not because you're good, not because I'm strong, not because you're strong, but because He is strong and because He is good. And He says, I'm greater when I'm in you than anyone else in the world. Don't live, don't live like a loser. You see, victory, there's an encouragement, there's an exhortation. But there's also an example. Or I'd say it this way, no distraction in this life. In this life, we're apt to get distracted. We're apt to be like the squirrel in the cartoon. Squirrel. Here we go. Every shiny thing catches our attention. Every little problem captivates our gaze. Teenager with you sometimes is every inconsistency you see will hold you right here. And sometimes your parents will be inconsistent. Right? Not you, Johnny. James. But other parents. Now we're all inconsistent, aren't we? Aren't we? There's inconsistency all around us. 
We're quick to identify that. And sometimes inconsistency captivates us. Well, that's not right. They should have not acted like they still have a sinful nature. They should have acted perfectly because I always act perfectly, right? That's how we respond, isn't it, though? And not just teenagers, adults, isn't that how we respond sometimes, too? Well, they're a Christian. They should have treated me better. I'm, but my anger is righteous indignation, right? That's righteous zeal. Theirs is just sinful. No distractions. The victory, our eyes on the prize. What do we win? We win Jesus. We win Jesus. We win glory. We win Arby's last year, Arby's, the restaurant, had a contest. The contest was a chance to win a trip to Hawaii for one day. A one-day trip to Hawaii. When you got to Hawaii, there would not be time for sightseeing, only time for eating some of their sandwiches. Six hours, in fact, of eating their sandwiches. And then you fly home immediately. No beaches, no coconuts, no long walks, no sun, just an airplane, Arby's sandwiches, and an airplane. And if that wasn't enough, this trip, if you won, would cost you $6. Some executive approved this marketing idea. Somebody somewhere, I, I don't know if they still work for Arby's, they probably shouldn't. If it wasn't enough, and so you figure if you came from Michigan, I'm going to fly a three-hour flight to L.A., that's where the flight went out of, and, and then it's about 13 hours from there, two hours before the flight, so I'm finally to Hawaii. I, I eat there for six hours straight, and in 24 hours I've spent probably uh, 12 or more of it on the airplanes, or more. And I have to pay six bucks. And I have to pay six bucks. It's an insult. Well, the six dollars was in reference to their promotion at that time, that their sandwiches were only six dollars. But why would I pay six dollars to torture myself on an airplane to Hawaii and have to eat an Arby sandwich? At least they could have given me a free sandwich. Sometimes that's how we feel the Christian life of victory is. Oh, I'm going to go to Hawaii, but I got to fly an airplane, eat a sandwich, and fly back, and I got to pay six bucks. What kind of prize is that? And yet I read my Bible, and the prize is no sham prize. It's no fraudulent prize. It's the greatest prize that we can have. This victory is supposed to be an example to other people. That means your coworkers ought to see you living a victorious life. They ought to say, what? They, you ought to make them wonder, what is going on in your life? That doesn't make any sense. Your kids actually like you. They want to talk to you. Why is that? You mean you and your wife actually like each other? Right? Flanders, I think I saw today, just celebrated 50. Was it 51 years I saw, right? Did you see that? 51 years. I think I'm correct on that. 51 years married. That's amazing. If they were here, I'm sure they'd tell you, they still like each other. That's victory in Jesus. That's not normal. That doesn't just happen. That's not even realism. That's only by Jesus Christ. Victory. Others can see it. Others can follow it. See, faith and victory is not fraud. It's real. It's life-changing. It's motivational. It's desirable. See, in this life, if I walk in victory... There ought not be defeat in my life. I may fall. The Bible says a just man falls seven times and cries and moans and whines and complains. What does my Bible say? A just man falls seven times, yet riseth up again. You know what that is? That's a verse of victory. It says, you can knock me down, but my Jesus can help me get back up. That's what my Bible says. That's what it means. It means to walk in victory, not a defeat, not a discouragement. Oh, there's that old little kid song. Nobody likes me. Everybody hates me. I think I'll go eat worms. A lot of Christians doing a lot of worm eating out there. And Jesus said, I'll give you manna from on high. He had the bread of life, not just worms. No discouragement and no distraction. A lot of things 
young people, a lot of things, friend, want to take your attention off Jesus Christ. Paul says, I press toward the mark, toward the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus, that I may know him and the power. So, my friend, you walk in victory, in faith, you're walking in yourself. It's the only choice there is. If you're discouraged, you're not walking in faith. You're not. If you're defeated, you're not walking in faith. If you're distracted, you're not walking in faith. Whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world, and this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. So tonight, my friend, walk in faith. Teenager, walk in faith. Grand, grandma, walk in faith. Mom, dad, walk in faith. Junior higher, walk in faith. Second grader, walk in faith. Every Christian, walk in faith. Brings victory. Lord, thank you for loving us. Thank you for what you've done for us. Lord, thank you for the victory that you bring. Lord, help us to realize those ways that we've not been walking in faith. Lord, we've been distracted or defeated or discouraged. Lord, help us to put our eyes back on you, the author and finisher of our faith. Lord, forgive us for those times we come short. Tonight, with heads bowed and eyes closed, I wonder if you're here and you say, Pastor Howell, as you spoke, God spoke to me. I need to walk in faith tonight. I've not been walking in faith. I've not had that victory in my life. Would you pray for me? Would you pray that I'd walk in that faith? Who says, Pastor, that's me. As you spoke, God spoke to me tonight. Amen. His hands all over. Amen. Amen. Yes, I need that victory in my life. Amen. Amen. Who else? Amen. Amen. Just a moment. We'll stand to our feet. Do I pray? I encourage you to take that first step. Do business with God. Walk in faith and in victory. Lord, thank you for these hands, for this time. Lord, you've seen the hearts. Lord, I pray for those who have knowledge they need to do business with you, that they would walk in faith with you, Lord, and encourage their hearts. Lord, help them to see the victory that you bring, the blessings that are just off that diving board of faith. Lord, bless this invitation in Jesus' name. Amen. As we stand to our feet, the piano's already playing. Victory in Jesus. You need to visit with God. The altar's open. You come now.